Hey guys, it's Hink here once again. Uh, for those that don't know me, uh, I go by the name of uh, Hinkle McPringleberry, aka Hink, aka Doc HMK. Um, so I'm actually a um, real life physician, um, board certified here in the US, and I'm trying to bring topics regarding uh, penis enlargement, PE for short, um, into the mainstream and to add more science and safety and efficacy into what we do. And so today I wanted to talk about a topic that, you know, has some coverage here and there, but for some reason it still doesn't get the coverage that it needs. And that's basically, where is the proof that penis enlargement works? And so today we're going to be tackling specifically some of the best papers that look at actual uh, attraction therapy, in, uh, in particular extenders, okay? And so I'm going to try to make this quick, uh, but if you like what I do, um, you can find me on Getting Bigger. Uh, once again, um, that's the user Hinkle McCringleberry, um, and also I do have a Patreon for those that need injury and counseling or specific um, PE counseling from a medical perspective. I don't really do PE coaching because I don't feel, I guess, qualified to do that. I don't have enough experience, uh, but I digress. Um, so today, we're gonna, the first paper we're going to be looking at is a paper uh, by the author, last name Gontero, and so this was published in 2008, and so I'm going to go chronological order here. But basically, this was a paper that was looking at the use of an extender um, to try to figure out um, is, is it effective or not. And in particular, this was a phase two trial. And so there's, there's three different phases of clinical trials. Phase uh, one is just to um, try to understand, is this actually safe to do? And so this is specifically when you're looking at like a new drug, for example. Then phase two is now that you've established that it's safe, you look at the efficacy of it. Is it actually effective? Does it do, does it do what it says it's going to do? And so this is in particular a phase two trial um, using an extender device. And so some topics that are important is that these are all papers looking at people with normal penises. So that does not include Peyronie's disease or other diseases that could potentially shrink the penis. <clears throat> and so there's this term dysmorphophobia dysmorphophobia and basically it's like a mix between like penile dysmorphia and like body dysmorphia and penile phobia so just like a fear associated with it and it's basically when you have the perception of having a small penis even though your penis is well within the normal range and so of note um, they say that you're below the normal range when you're less than four centimeters or less than seven centimeters just so you have some some kind of background and so what they did uh, was that they looked in changes in both flaccid and stretched penile length after six months and they, addition, and they continued to look at it for even up to a year afterwards. Importantly on this trial, they also looked at what we call the International Index of Erectile Function or IIEF because what's the point of having a bigger dick if you can't use it? Um, so they measured, like I think all of these studies measure using um, non-bone pressed. And so they apply tension and measure from basically the, pubo, um, the pubopenile junction, um, skin junction to the meatus. And so they used, a uh, patient had an extender and they used it for six hours, at least four hours daily uh, for six months. And um, this was an informed consent of note that these were, this study looked at 21 patients and the median time of use was five hours at one month, uh, five hours at three months and four hours at six months. So with more time, people were less inclined to use it. And so when you look at actual changes, at six months, um, patients had a, a change in their flaccid stretched, their, excuse me, in their flaccid length by 2.3 centimeter increase, okay? That's a 0 0.9 inch increase, so almost a full inch increase in their flaccid, but however, they still had a 1.7 centimeter increase in their um, stretched length, um, which is uh, 0 0.7 inches, and this frequently comes up in People who don't want to believe this say, oh, well, it's your stretch length. It doesn't equate to your erect length. Well, actually it does. And I can cover that on a different topic, but there are several published papers say that there's a direct correlation, including one of the papers we'll discuss today that shows that actually erect length does in fact correlate with stretch length in this setting of length gains from an extender. And so um, of note, they actually found that there was a mildly significant increase in girth. Um, it was a significant, there's something called a p-value, which determines whether or not something is like real or something is just a, related to artifact. And so there was an improvement, but it was 0.03 centimeters. I don't even know how they're measuring that um, significantly or, or uh, reliably. Um, and so 
of note, which is very important, they actually had a significant improvement in that erectile function score with these, with these treatments, okay? And overall satisfaction was increased using this treatment. Um, as far as side effects, there was only one evidence uh, or one patient that had penile bruising and one with temporary discoloration, but both of them were fine. And so basically what they're concluding is that um, in their discussion, they talk more about how much safer and how much more effective this is compared to especially some of these mainstream surgeries where you have something that's called like a Z-plasty suprapubic skin incision with suprapubic lipectomy and incision of the suspensory ligament of the penis. And so these high morbidity, highly involved procedures where you're doing skin grafts and cutting ligaments and you can have high rates of uh, erectile dysfunction after them. But yet you have uh, this study using an extender where you can get very significant links, even more so than the surgery. And they say that as a result of the study, it's favorable safety profile. It's, this is a very feasible and should be first line treatment option in, uh, for people seeking uh, penis enlargement. Um, and so uh, also what they found was that um, when they rechecked after a six month time period off, there was no changes in the um, length gained in either the flaccid or the erect, uh, or excuse me, or the stretched length. So you have results and they continue even for up to six months. So I'm gonna try to get through this stuff quickly so I don't talk too long. Um, I know some of you all don't like those longer videos. So the next study we're going to look like is the effect of the penile extender device in increasing penile size in men with shortened penis uh, preliminary results. And so this was looking at people who complained of short penis syndrome who wore this extender device for at least four to six hours and were trained on how to increase the force of the device. So this looked at a total of 23 patients. They were aged 18 to 34 years old and the mean flaccid length increased from 8.8 .8 to 10.1 centimeters and, uh, excuse me, 8.8 .8 to 10.1 to 10.5 at the first and the third month. And so uh, you can have, that is in a difference in 1.7 centimeters within three months. And so that's uh, a total of what, 0 0.6 inches. And so that's a very significant gain. And so you had the improvement in once again, both flaccid length and stretched penile length. They measured stretched penile length the same way. No significant difference was found in circumference. This is a paper published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine, a major sexual journal in the United States, or internationally published in 2011. And so once again, this is a prospective trial. It's not saying, I mean, they, they had the question and looked at people moving forward to try to figure out, um, does this actually have an effect? And once again, you have clear prospective data that once again, this is working. The last paper we're gonna talk about is um, the most recent paper and this I thought was particularly good. And so this is a device, sorry, my glasses are kind of fogging up. Let me see if I can adjust that real fast. And so um, this was a paper looking at the um, applying extender device in patients with penile dysmorphophobia and assessing the tolerability, efficacy, and the impact on erectile function. And so in this paper, they looked at 163 men was the total um, volume of men. The big difference with this study is that they looked at the flaccid length, they looked at the stretched flaccid length, but they also looked at the erection length, okay? So this is a big difference. This is also published in 2015, so you have more recent uh, data as well, okay? And so um, basically, for time's sake, I'll go through some of the key points, but they found that, once again, at six months follow-up, you had a mean gain of 1.7 inches in the stretch, in the, excuse me, in the flaccid length, 1.3 in the stretch flaccid length, and 1.2 in the erect length. And so they not only measured the stretch flaccid length by scientific methods using the investigators on this paper, but they also had the patient induce an erection just using some kind of sexual stimuli, a rigid erection is what they call it in the materials and methods, and then they had them measure. And so you can see that there is a direct increase in size in their erect length from the time that they did the study to the time that they were done with this, that they started to the time they finished it. And it directly correlated with, uh, the, um, with the erect gains that you see. And so this paper is showing in a prospective fashion that yes, stretched 
flaccid length does direct correlate with erect length. And so uh, I'm sorry if I sound frustrated. I just hate having these debates with people who are just misinformed. And, you know, there's anyways, that's that's I'm not going to go off topic so far. And so uh, let me just make sure there's no other key points that I wanted to talk about. And so of note, um, in this paper, they also saw what we tend to see in this field where there's something that's called the newbie gains phenomenon where t people tend to gain the most within the first three months. And that's actually what they saw in this paper is that within the first three months, you had the most dramatic gains. And then after that, there were still some gains, but they weren't nearly as significant as within the first three months compared to the last three months. Um, they noted an increase of 8.3% in flaccid length, 4.8% in stretch flaccid length, and 3.9% in erect length in this paper, okay, in this prospective cohort paper. Once again, they saw an improvement. 64% of the people had an improvement in their erection quality with this study, so these extenders are not harming erectile function. And there was uh, no significant decrease at 32 months after, so well, like almost a year and a half afterwards, there was no significant decrease in the penile length in either stretch or the flaccid nets without continued um, extender use. And so um, also just something that I found interesting is that they said that nine centimeters is the cutoff for basically a normal stretched penis length, okay? So nine centimeters, uh, for those of us in the U.S., is 3.54 inches, okay? So bone, non-bone press, 3.54 inches um, is, uh, is a normal penis. They also talked ad nauseum about how surgery is bad, and this should basically be the gold standard. So I'm going to try to be brief, but just summarizing, you know, there is very significant evidence that penis enlargement works, natural penis enlargement. It's based on traction therapy, which I'm going to go into the mechanics of you know, yes, we know this works, but how exactly does it work? Well, I have proposed several different methods, as many others have as well. But this, this works. It's not up for debate. I, I don't know why we still have this debate. Um, it works. It clearly works. These are three different prospective cohorts, including a phase two trial showing that this works for enlargement. You know, <clears throat> the frustrating thing is I know I'm not changing minds because I'm sure somebody that doesn't believe in this is going to read these paper and point out like minuscule flaws like, oh, well, it's not a randomized control trial or, you know, once again, try to be like, oh, well, it's stretched length and it's not erect length, which I did already show that it increases erect length as well. So, you know, if you want to debate, uh, you know, I'm here for it. I mean, uh, you know, please feel free to leave it in the comments, but I, I don't expect to change any minds with this. Um, this is safe. There was a very low rate of injuries on any of these papers, and these were actually using a noose extender. And so they had a little silicone strap that wrapped over the glands of the penis to hold it in place, not a vacuum extender. Um, it's effective. And so, um, you know, this stuff works. There's clearly evidence for it. I'm going to try to break down more papers. I just wanted to get out this, you know, relatively short video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Find me on um, our subreddit, Getting Bigger. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.